YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, today's video is going to be on fitting a complete axle and bearing kit to a TE20 rear axle, a Ferguson TE20. And the kit we're going to fit is Sparex number S42078. I use this kit all the time, it's a, it's a good kit. And you can buy the kit without the bearing. Oh, well, the kit comes without the bearing, I should say. And, but the bearing number is S18516. See if I can get that where you can actually read it. But, but the, bearing, the bearing doesn't have to be replaced each time you do the seal, but I figure while you're there, why not do it? The, the seal at the back of the... Um, the seal on the outside here is a double lip seal. It's, it's this this fella here. It has a dirt excluding lip on the outside here, a neoprene lip inside. Now you can buy this seal separately if you like to. It's S41416. And I like to use these seals because they have the steel outer. The you can buy seals with a rubber outer and when you put them in, they, they wobble around a bit trying to get in and, and sometimes you can wipe a bit of Loctite or something around here, but look, if your housing is good and the seal's sitting in good, you don't need to. But I like the steel on the outside here. Um, CR, and, um, um, CR and National, they have good seals as well. The, the collar, S41407. If you have to pull any of this off, you're going to damage the collar. You can buy that separate as well. And that's the piece that we shrink on later on to hold the whole show together. Now, this seal here, have a look at this. A proper leather seal like in the old days. What a beauty. And once again, not rubber on the outside. So this seal here, on the later model TE20s, it sits on the axle oh, about here somewhere and you'll notice the axles are a bit longer or well, this, this shiny part here the ground piece is a bit longer now the early tractors didn't have this and this tractor that we're working on now is a 1948 we believe and it doesn't have that so what we're going to do is we're going to centre pop the collar here drill it, split it press this off clean everything up and we're going to fit a new bearing, a new outer seal, and a new collar. And follow along, see what we get up to with it. Now the first thing I choose to do when doing this job is drill the collar. Now, what my normal procedure is, I come right over to the, almost near the chamfer, and put a centre pop mark there, a nice big one, and we have a small drill that we're going to run down there. And the idea of that is so we don't run across into this housing here, or into this nice surface where it's all got to go. Um, I usually go with a small drill first, and then we open it out. And we try and keep the drill as straight as we can. Sometimes at the top of the drill, the chuck gets in the road, but we'll get it underway and see how we go. You'll feel when you've gone far enough, the point of the drill just sits on the back of the bearing and you can't go any further. There we are there. Okay, so we've got a bigger drill and we're just looking to weaken the side here.
feel that's gone down to the bearing too. There's no more coming out. So we'll put the drill over to the side, out of the way. Now, I have a tapered punch. I'll open it up with a, the centre punch. Then I usually have a tapered punch. loosens it off. That's not doing it for me today. We'll have to bring in the big gun. nearly off. I probably should have gone bigger with my drill. I should have a nice tiny little cold drizzle in here. That's what we're looking for. Normally I don't have to go to that extent, I just, I should have went for a bigger drill first. So there's the collar off. So now we put this on our pressing plate that we've made ages ago and we'll try and pull this bearing off. Now this is a plate that I made for the press ages ago now and what we do, we just make sure all the bolts are in the holes. There's a couple of studs that we had left there that we can pop nuts onto to help with pulling the housing off. And we're going to pull the whole bottom housing with the bearing straight up and out, hopefully. So we'll see how it all goes. I like to put a hole in every, uh, sorry, a bolt in every hole so that you know you're pulling good. So. All right, I'll do this up and we'll be back in a minute. Right, we have this in the hydraulic press now. And I've bolted the plate on nice and tight. This is a 50 ton press, it should pop it out, but boy, I've had some tight ones over the years. So we'll give this a bit. That's it, axle pressed out. Right, I've pressed the axle out and just undone the bolts around here, save you watching me do that. And we lift the, lift the axle plate up and we're left with the housing here. Now that's the bearing. Doesn't look in too bad a condition. Down in here we have the bearing cup and that looks quite, quite rusty. Well, the grease is rusty anyway, so when we have a look. Now 
there is little little lines across the bearing particularly two little ones there you may be able to see so this is the seal this is a leaky seal it's caused us to go to this effort so we'll pop that up in the vise now we'll knock the seal out and we'll pull out the bearing cup right we've got the the outer axle housing held in the vise now this surface here is the seal so we can just knock that down with a punch Just side to side. One seal on the floor. Now the bearing on the bearing cup here. You'll see a little cut out here. Another one on the other side. That's where you try and um, knock the bearing out. I might turn him around this way, get it away from the camera a little bit. Don't really want to wreck the camera. And we punch from one side to the other, straight down here. Make sure you have your glasses on for this job. There you go. One bearing cup hitting the camera on the way down, but on the floor. So there's the housing. I may pull these studs out. I'll just see. It needs a good needs a good clean up. It's very grubby. So we'll clean it up and we'll come back and start assembly. Well, so we can sit this housing over the other side here nicely and get the seal in. I've decided to remove the studs and just give us a nice flat surface for putting them in so I do have stud removers that I can just drop straight down and hook a gun up and brrrr and out they're out but I'm presuming you don't have that so I thought I'd just show you how we used to do it out in the bush oh. and a couple of the nuts that come off these studs grab one run it down on the bolt grab the next nut and Put them tight against each other and then usually hop on the bottom one and out it comes. Still quite firm but there you go. Now I'll do the same to the other side and we'll come back in a minute. Right, I've done all the holes, cleaned the threads, and before we put this bearing in, the, the cup, what I like to do is get the old cup, so that's a tight fit in there, I like to get the old cup and I put it in the grinder, you only got to do one if you're doing the pair, and I actually grind a little bit of a chamfer on here. and. The reason for that is that now I can use this as a tool to press the bearing in and I have it so it can go a fair way down into the hole there and that's just got stuck on me. <laughs> Just went a little bit crooked on me. And you can see, hopefully you can see, that if we sit them together there, it's just a little bit smaller. I think you can just see it there. And the idea is to put this in, put a bit of oil around it, put it in, and if you're going to press it or um, bump it in with a hammer, no problem, we should be able to get that bearing all the way home. 
Now, if you're going to bump it in with a hammer, make sure you support it around here, not on the side here. Put it down flat on the bench, and um, so you've got a, a fully supported housing near where you're putting the load. Now, I do have a press. You saw me press the axle apart, and normally I'd sit this in the press, I'd bring this bearing down and press it in. But the idea of these clips is to encourage you to do it yourself. And a lot of you may not have a press, so I'll, I'll bang one in, the other side I'll, I'll press in like I normally do. But the idea is to show you and encourage you to have a go yourself. So put some oil around here and oil inside the housing there. Make sure you have your safety glasses on. Now the fat side of the bearing goes down and the thin side up. If you remember the, the cone has to come down into it this way. So we can use our bearing cup. We need to get it as true as we can. Make sure you have glasses on for this job. I'll shift a little bit of the rubbish off my bench. You can see that on its way. And if we look down inside there, we can see that that bearing is home. There's a little, little dark mark there, but that dark mark is just the radius on the back of the bearing here. So we know we're home all the way. And you can hear that's a nice, nice hard, sharp sound now. So, so we'll wipe that out. If you have a press, do it in the press. But I'm, this is just to help you out if you're just the average bloke with a shed and haven't got a workshop full of gear. Now, the seal, the S41416 seal goes down this way. Now, it's got a nice smooth finish in here. It's a nice ground finish on the outside of the seal. I usually try and wipe them clean. Sometimes there's a little bit of, um, um, little bit of anti rust sort of stuff on it. But no real need to put anything on the outside there. Um, that should seal well. Um, if you're going to sleep better at night putting it on, put it on. It's one of those things, if it's not going to do any good, can it do any harm? It can't do any harm. But your silicon-based products, don't put them anywhere near your tractor. Use aviation cement or something like that. So I'll go and find a little bit of steel or something we can sit on there, and we'll try and bump that in. You can't use this anymore. See, that fellow's too big. But... I keep that, now I've ground that one, I'll keep that over on the press, I have 35 ones there already, so we'll go and find a, a nice piece of round steel about the right size if we can, and we'll drive that seal home. Right, there you go. I lost a little bit of footage there, I pressed the wrong button on the camera, but what I did, I, I had this round plate, I brought the round plate down, hammered on that, just to get the seal started, and then once the seal is started, I used the old seal, now, on these old seals, you'll notice you've got a, a full edge around here, you must be particular to line that up with the outside of the seal. And, and thump it in a little bit. You must make sure that the seal is level all the way around. And it does look level all the way around. The seal has come down onto the shoulder in the middle, so that's a good thing. 
And one thing I should have mentioned is the spring on the seal goes towards the oil. So you have a small lip on the outside here, then you have a large lip on the oil side, so you can't put it in back to front. So that's all we can do on that now, on that housing. We'll go and get the axle and we'll work out what we have to do with that. Right, I've gone and got the dirty old axle and what do we have to look at with the axle? We have to look at where this, where this ceiling ring comes down here or where the shrink collar comes down. There's no damage. On this one there's not. The bearing surface is looking good. Now the seal surface, you see that little black run around there? That's a little bit of rust. So that'll have to be polished off with a little bit of sandpaper. There's a slight, slight wear mark there. Look, it's not worth worrying about. Um, because your seal's made of rubber, the lip will, will conform to that a little bit. What you have to make sure of is that there's no pits in there. If there's any pits or sharp edges, that will cut your new seal straight away. So look, this is okay. There's a bit of a mark on here. Looks like it was done in assembly. It's actually, yeah, the cast mark is still there. And at this stage too, this is when you have a look at all your wheel studs. Look, that one's loose. Have a look at your wheel studs. See if there's any thread repairs that need doing. That one's loose too. And just check everything out. Take your time. Have a look. It's far easier to do it now than on the tractor. You've got the single piece on the on the bench. That loose one, I can probably well, he didn't want to go anywhere. Anyway, look, I'll, I'll have a look at that and see if I um, deal with it or not. Sometimes at this stage too, after we clean it, I run a uh, die down there um, just to clean the threads up, just to make sure. But, but look, take the time and have a look, clean the threads and do whatever else you have to do and we'll get it set up. I'll go and clean this one, we'll get it set up for assembly. Well, I've cleaned all the axle up. I've run a, a, a die nut over all the threads and I'm happy that there's no more work to be done. I've polished the surface where the bearing goes. I've polished the surface where the seal goes. There's still a little mark there, but I, I don't believe it's enough to worry about for our particular job. Um, so what we do now, is get some grease, your favourite grease and lubricate the seal just make sure there's a little bit of grease on the lip I'll just put a bit around here too just to help it help it slide on and get over that sharp edge there, there's quite a sharp lip there we bring the seal down we're just careful with it as we go, rocking back and forth a bit. And there's the seal on. So now we have to work out how we're getting the bearing out. I'll show you a little trick. Right, now we've got the seal on and it's sitting in its place. We now have to put the bearing on. Now we had to press that off. We knew it was a tight fit to press off. But there is a little trick we can use to drop the bearing on without needing a press. But you might have to sneak into the kitchen and wait till your missus has gone shopping. Well, look at this. Ta da! <laughs> this, is, this is a chip cooker. Now what I like to do is drop the bearing in a chip cooker, sit it in like that. Now that's why you've got to sneak into the kitchen when the missus isn't there. Um, you put the chip cooker on flat out, put the lid back on and wait for it to come up to temperature. When the chip cooker is on flat out on the knob, I usually wait for it to cycle three or four times, you know, it gets right up to maximum and then drop off again, right up and drop off. And then I know the bearing's hot enough. And that gives me time to 
get a set of multi grips to lift the bearing on um, and do a few little tidy up jobs like that. The oil in there is just transmission oil, nothing special about it. You could use engine oil, you could use your chipping, your sunflower oil, or your canola oil, or your chip oil. It's just a means of transferring heat from the pot here into the bearing to expand the bearing so it'll expand big enough to drop down onto the housing here. So I'll turn her off, I'll get myself ready and I'll be back when we're right to rock and roll. Now you can see the oil moving around with its own heat. It's cycled a couple of times the water, or the oil I'm sorry. I just got my hand over here so I can see the see the thermostat. Now the moment that thermostat clicks out, we know we're right at maximum temperature. That's when we grab the grab the bearing and we get stuck into it. We have to do it quickly. The bearing does cool down very quick, so we have to be have to be ready. Okay, it's there. Bring him up. All done. This must be a little tighter. I've had them that they just drop down straight into place. So, so that way there, I'll turn the turn the chip cooker off. Unless you want to put put something in there, put a dim sim or something like that in there. And that's how we get the bearing on. So, this housing will come up there now, and we have to. Next job is to do the collar now. The oil, using the oil for the collar, it just doesn't get it hot enough. We actually have to get this red hot to drop it down. So we'll go over to the oxy bench and do that and see how we go with it all. Okay, as you can see, we're over on the welding bench. I have the collar that we need to heat up here. And I have it on a small piece of steel. Now my welding bench is an inch and a quarter thick, steel, solid steel. So by bringing it up here, the heat doesn't all want to draw down into the, into the bench. Now, it's always good just to check this edge here, make sure there's a bit of a chamfer there, and that'll give it a little lead in if it needs one. I'll get the oxy going, we'll come back in a minute. Quickly. 
And there you go, that's in place. We'll try and get you right in there. Don't burn yourself. Now that'll just cool down on its own. We know it's gone right down. You can see the colour coming out of there now. And look, what I do, I just let it sit for a while. Um, no hurry. And wait until it cools on its own. And that will contract on there and stop your axle falling out. Well, there you go. That's how to fit the S42076 seal kit and the S18516 bearing to a TE20 hub. Now, the TE20s, they, um, th that job will work for the whole lot of them. On the later T20s, this is a 1948, we don't have a seal here. Um, they, have a, they have another seal up in the housing, in the trumpet housing on the later ones, but the early ones didn't have it. And there was only this bottom seal here to do the sealing. The, that's, that's the other seal that would have sat up, up here somewhere on the later type axle. Um, these are a 16 spline axle. I think the seal come out with the 19 spline axle, but I could stand corrected on that. Now, another thing that you could think about is when we polish this bottom housing up here, if you have a couple of pits and um, you, you can't quite get that seal surface as, as good as you would like, um, you can still, after doing this job, fill this bearing with grease and bring a shore seal down over the top. I did a clip just the other day on how to fit a shore seal onto a TE20 tractor, and what that does, if this outer seal surface is not quite 100%, you, you know, you're a bit worried about it. It puts the seal up here to seal on there. Oh, that's still hot. Um, puts the seal surface up here and it acts the same as the later one. So keep that in mind. If, if you can't polish that axle up enough, you don't really need to go and buy a new axle. You can probably um, put the new sealing, put the bearing and do the collar. The job that we've just done here but bring a shore seal down over the top to seal on here, just as a, a secondary precaution. But look, whether you do that or not, that's up to you. It was just a, you know, just a suggestion um, to save you possibly having to fork out and, and get a second axle. Um, another thing I like to do with these axles is this one is off the right hand side of my tractor. I'm gonna get the paint pen shortly and right, right hand on it, I believe with the axles out of the tractor, if they've been used to sort of flexing one way for 70 years now, um, going the other way, they mightn't like it. Once again, I, I don't know if it does make a difference or not, it's just something I like to do. I like to keep the left hand axle on the left, the right hand on the right, because they're, they're used to going that way. So anyway, uh, it may be for nothing, it's just something I like to do. So look, that's it. Um, all the parts, for this was supplied by Sparex, Sparex um, tractor parts they back our channel and you will be able to find the parts here for sale on my website on queenslandtractorspares.com.au and we'll put a link to the Sparex website so if you're in England, Ireland, America, any other part of the world but Australia, um, hop on the Sparex website. They don't deal direct to the public, but they have a vast dealer network around the world. So there will be someone near you more than likely. So anyway, the idea of these is to encourage you to do it yourself. Um, some things you can't do, um, like pressing the bearing up. I've actually out in the bush had to just nick the bearing with an oxy and, and open it up or something like that. But look, have a go. The parts are readily available. Um, and that's the main reason that we do these videos to encourage you to have a go so anyway that's all we can show you on this for the moment well, thanks for watching um please comment down the bottom subscribe to the channel and um we'll probably catch you next time mate eh?